Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Breaking Brews Podcast, a podcast focused on the business side of beer and what's driving today's thriving craft beer industry. Whether you're one of the thousands of people making craft beer what it is today, or just love great beer and want to know more about it, this show is here to cover everything from sales, marketing, branding, culture, and much, much more. The Breaking Brews Podcast delivers real-life scenarios and experiences from industry professionals that will help your beer knowledge evolve. To tap into more great beer content, visit BreakingBrews.com today. And now, the moment you've been waiting for. Let's get this session started. All right, kids, gather around. It is time for another installment of the Breaking Brews podcast. I am your host, Jason Sircone, and you are tuned in for session five of the Breaking Brews podcast. I hope you've all been enjoying release week. Five episodes in five days. I hope it hasn't been too overwhelming for all of you, and it's been just as fun for you as it's been for me. Today, I'm flying solo and tackling the subject of social media. You're going to discover on the Breaking Brews podcast that there's going to be a lot of episodes dedicated to marketing, to using social media effectively and appropriately to help grow your brands. And we're going to kick that off today with this show. Basically, the idea here is to not get into a lot of technical detail, really not looking to open up that can of worms at this point, more or less want to give you some basic ideas that you can implement immediately. As I record this podcast, I am in the process of doing my best to follow every brewery in the United States on Instagram and on Twitter. There may be a few states, depending on where you're listening to this podcast, you may have seen me follow your brand. And ultimately, it's to get to know what brands are doing to utilize social media. And what I've discovered is there's a lot of good out there. There's a lot of bad, and there is a lot of ugly. Ugly is disappointing because social media is supposed to be fun. And I know a lot of people just don't look at it in that context. A lot of people ignore it completely to the point where they don't even have a presence. They don't even have a page set up on Facebook, or they don't even have Twitter set up. I just feel like that is not the best way to build your brand because the internet has completely shifted. And this is a process that started taking place well over a decade ago. The the internet is now social, period. Don't get me wrong, sites like Google and search engines, they, they still have tremendous value, and I'm not saying that they don't. But how often do you see someone go onto Twitter or onto Facebook to ask for recommendations about where to go, what products to buy, where where do I get my hair cut, where do I get my nails done? People are, instead of going to Google, and I could, let let me back up one second, they could still be using Google, but they ultimately care about what their friends and their community has to say about where they should go. If you're a brand that doesn't exist on Facebook, there's no way for someone to tag you and One of the cool things about Facebook and the recommendations platform is that when someone tags your business, it puts you on a map and shows people where you're located. That's some powerful stuff. You you want to be there. With With these networks, there's over millions and millions of users that are flocking to these networks every day, so you want to be a part of that too. It's a tremendous place to build your brand because you can do it in many, many creative ways. One of the things that I've discovered as I've started this process, and I knew going into this that if I was going to truly follow every brand that has an Instagram account and has a Twitter account, it was going to take me it was going to take me a long time. And, and, I, and I'm a couple weeks into this, and I haven't been spending all my time on this. It's just when I have a few minutes, I will pull up the Brewers Association directory, pick up where I left off, follow, check out what they're doing, see what pictures look good, like a few photos. Hopefully, in, in some cases, I've been dropping lines on Twitter just to say hello. And it's it, to me, it's really fun because I like to have that type of interaction with these brands. And it helps me get to know them a little bit better. And what I've discovered is that 
like I said a few minutes ago, there's some good, there's some bad, and there's some ugly. One of the biggest social media qualms, and I think this is something that isn't just related to the beer industry or the restaurant industry or the, the bar world, is, is consistency. Using social media consistently can be very difficult. And I understand that because everybody has their priorities in their business and people are going to put one thing higher than the other in a lot of cases. This is where I feel that the brands that prioritize social media and building their digital presence can get a leg up on the brands that don't because they are taking the time to be a part of their community from a digital perspective. And doing that consistently will help people recognize that brand. I've, I've had conversations with people that feel that too much, and I, I could not disagree with that more. And the reason for that is because there is a lot of noise out there. There are a lot of other companies putting content in front of your end user that they, only, that they can only consume so much on a daily basis. So if you're not willing to put the time into at least try then you're never going to get caught up. So it's very important, and probably the biggest rule that I can emphasize with social media is to be consistent. Now, you may feel that doing this every day is not to your advantage. Maybe you want to do something every other day. Maybe you want to do Facebook today, Instagram tomorrow, and Twitter either the next day or mixed in between there. Whatever the combination ends up shaking out as, Establish some sort of strategy and stick to it. Personally, I, I recommend daily. I think that that is the strongest way to keep people connected to your brand. Now, will people see your content every day? Probably not, unless you're willing to invest a lot of money to make that happen. And we're going to get into that here momentarily. But from a purely organic basis, if you want to get your brand out there Show that you're having fun with social media, that you're building a presence, that you're part of the community. You can do that by establishing a very simple strategy. Now, you don't have to post all day, every day. I'm not suggesting that you sit at your computer nonstop and just play on social media. And play is probably the wrong word to use here, but I know a lot of people feel like that's what it is still. With the power of the internet and the power of the social web, some people still view social media as playing. And I, I just don't get that. This is our world now. This is where we are playing. We are hanging out. We are conversing. We are learning. We are growing as a community and as a population of humans through the social web. Tells me that it is someplace that you'd be foolish to not want to tap into. And there are ways to do that. And the biggest way, like I said, and we're, again, not trying to get into all of the technical terminology today, being consistent with the strategy that you set up is going to get you there. Now, I know I talk to a lot of people that they get upset because Facebook is constantly changing and, and new algorithms are being put into place. And because Facebook owns Instagram, that's starting to trickle into how Instagram is utilized. But if you notice, if, if you really focus on what these networks are looking to deliver, those changes are for the better. Because what, what I can say from having gone to seminars hosted by Facebook is they care so much about the user experience. I know there have been times that I've been pissed off about implemented changes or changes that they've implemented. I've learned to adjust to those changes because they're not, they're, it's not going to stop. Ultimately, they're making those changes because people are telling them, hey, this aspect of your network is not working for me. And if enough people do that, we should be thankful that somebody is actually taking the time to make those changes. When Facebook or Instagram or Twitter changes their algorithm, in essence, you think about it, like, here's a great example. Twitter, for the longest time, when it first came out, didn't have an algorithm that would let you see tweets from, let's say, 10 minutes ago. And it was really hard, unless you actually were thinking about a brand in your head, you'd have to visit their profile to see what they said until they got hit to the whole algorithm where 
they were they built something that was putting content in front of you that you would want to see in the short window that you would spend on their network. That is extremely powerful and extremely awesome because the more you interact with the brand, it's triggering them to put this content in front of you. So now you're seeing it more and it's going to make your overall experience when you use that network much more enjoyable. And, and that goes for all of the platforms. And when I, when I talk about social media, there's three big ones that I often refer to, and that would be Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. YouTube is also in there. I think YouTube is different because it's practically a search engine. You can get notifications when somebody uploads a video, which I think is great. And the more you view videos, the more they're going to put them in your feed when you first log on to YouTube, much like all the other networks. But for today's conversation, let's keep it to Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. So let's talk about Facebook. And I can give you an example of how all of this works and why it works the way it does. I think it was about three or four years ago at this point, I attended a seminar hosted by Facebook. And it was at that time where things were shifting to where your organic content was only getting seen by a few people on your page. Now, if that organic content picked up some steam, then it would be seen by a few more people. But ultimately, it was a very small fraction of the of the people that like your page or follow your page that were actually seeing that organic content. And that remains consistent today. I mean, the easy answer to that is Facebook wants your money. And that's true. I, I, and I can't fault them for that. And we're going to talk about how that can be utilized here in a few moments as well. But at this seminar, I know I talked to some people where I said, hey, I'm going to this. And if there's any questions that you'd like me to ask, I'd be happy to get some answers. And almost to the to the letter every person i talked to wanted to know why is my content only seen by four to six percent of my of the people on my page that's not fair so on and so forth going into that seminar it was one of the very first questions asked to the presenters why is my content only being seen by such a small fraction of my followers their answer was very very solid and and when i actually heard them explain this it made complete sense the average Facebook user is on on Facebook, to, and, and I think it's got over 80% of people are doing this on their phone at this point on a daily basis and not a laptop or a desktop. They're on Facebook 10 minutes a day, or 10 minute sessions three times a day, so on average about half an hour. In that time frame, as they're scrolling through their news feed, they like a lot of other pages. They interact with a lot of different brands from multiple areas of focus, whether it be sports, politics, beer, wine, cider, the list goes on and on. On top of that, they're friends with lots of people and their friends are posting updates and they may interact with that. And when it comes down to it, in that short time frame that they are on Facebook, Facebook had to build something that ultimately delivered a great experience in that short window. And to do that, they were putting content in front of people that they want to see. And you probably notice this anytime that you log on to Facebook. The brands or the people that you interact with the most, they're the first things that you see. Because the more time that you spend liking, commenting, sharing information that these brands or these people put out, that's triggering Facebook to say they must want to see this when they log on. So now that content is given higher priority. So tying this all together, and again, just to backtrack one second, like I said, when I heard that, it made complete sense to me. And this is why I stress doing content in a consistent, frequent fashion. The more you put out there, the likelihood of someone liking, commenting, sharing, and, and, and interacting with your brand and engaging with it is much higher than if you just do it once a week or every other week or once a month. It gives people the opportunity to see what you're doing. And there's ways that you can do this and showcase it in a way that makes people want to engage. This is where if you've still been wondering why only such a small percentage see what you're doing, this is why. Because they have to make the user experience advertise content so your the user experience is ultimately great. I've gone to Facebook or Twitter or Instagram and we're scrolling and just we're seeing crap you didn't give a shit about. How, you know, how, how happy would you be? What's the likelihood of you wanting to keep coming back to that now? 
So it's a very sound strategy, and it, it, it works because it gives us all a great experience. So as a business and as a brand, it is up to you to put content out there that's going to get people to engage with you, to follow you, to talk to you. And that's a, a big a big peeve of mine. If people comment on your stuff, comment back. Talk to them. Start a conversation. Go on to other people's content and comment on it with meaningful comments. Don't just leave a freaking emoji. That's one of my biggest peeves of, I get it, that's, it's playing the game, but it's it's freaking T-ball versus the Yankees. Play it the right way. Just be meaningful. You don't have to write paragraphs. You don't have to write dissertations. You can just give a meaningful, thoughtful comment on something that somebody posts. Shows you care. And if you damn well better respond because this is a person that took there. And then take the time to comment it. Whether they talk shit or said something positive, respond. Don't just leave it hanging out there. They took the time. You got to take the time too. So let's talk about compartmentalizing your networks uh, to some degree. So like I said, Facebook, you, you want to, in my opinion, when there's a billion, there's no reason why you can't spend a few minutes being on that platform each day as well. Now, I'm a huge advocate of scheduling content out or beer releases or you find some content that you know your audience will engage with, whether it be an article about a beer or something related to your industry, put that out there and schedule it ahead of time. Facebook has scheduling built right into their platform, which makes it very easy to lay out as far out as you want to go. I've scheduled content out as far as two weeks. And you can go in and sh shift it and change it when necessary, but utilizing it daily just shows that you care. It shows Facebook that you care. As you continue to build validity in that network, it's going to show. And Facebook's going to notice that too. And your content will continue to course. We're, we're going to talk about ads here in one quick second. If you invest some money into it and show it shows Facebook that you do believe in it and you want to get the most from it. So that's going to help your organic content too. Now, again, as I mentioned, running ads and boosting posts is, is a big thing too. Think about print ads, billboards, TV ads, radio spots, these all cost money, right? So it's, it's, it's a head scratcher to think that people believe Facebook should be 100% free as well. This is have built a tremendous platform that has, it's captivated people's attention. And the, even the people that tell me they're not on Facebook, fuck that. I see them on Facebook. They're on there. They're posting things. They're sharing things. So they can't say they're not. I have friends that say, oh, I don't even go on there. Bullshit, guys. I know you're on there. So take the time to see what will work best investing some money. Run some targeted ads within, say, I mean, do it tightly. Do it within a 10-mile radius. Boost a couple posts that have gotten a few eyes on them. Clearly, your audience is reacting enough to show you that they cared about what you posted Throw 10 bucks at it. Just see what it does. And what's great about these ads is you can track the results. Facebook is going to deliver you men, women, children. <laughs> well, all right, let's, take, let's backtrack that. No, no real reason as a beer brand to be uh, <laughs> marketing to children, so save your money in that respect. But in all seriousness, Facebook is going to tell you who is seeing this content, who is consuming it, how many people you reached. That's going to allow you to pivot and shift for the next ad that you run or the next post that you boost. It's very powerful. Print ads and radio spots and billboards and television commercials, they can only tell you how many people are in the circulation and how many people may see this. But with this, you're getting tangible data that lets you know, hey, this ad worked or hey, it didn't. And at the end of the day, if it didn't really reach that many people, you're only out a few bucks, but it allows you to start learning how this system works. So being on there and being engaging and doing ads and doing boost posts that you that people want to see, it's good content, whether it's an event, whether it's a beer release, whether it's something that you're doing that you want people to know about, utilize Facebook for that. I, I've said it many times. I feel that Facebook is one of the best event management platforms out there just for what you can do because within your event, you can have conversations, you can post giveaways, you can post contests, you can really harness this network that has a lot of people on it and use it to your advantage. It's there for you to build off of and you can boost the events with building a budget behind that. 
there's a lot of ways to utilize that network. Above all else, be there, be on it. Utilize it to your advantage. Let's talk about Twitter. For years, and I still, I, I still have a very special place in my heart, but for years, Twitter was my favorite network. And as Instagram and Facebook have evolved over the years, I feel like they've overtaken Twitter, but not to the point where I would ever start, stop using it. Twitter is one of the greatest places for conversations because A, you're limited in characters, so you have to be creative. And B, you can have conversations with so many different people on so many different topics. It, it doesn't even have to relate to your brand. If, you're, if you feel passionately about something, it could be local sports. It could be politics if you want to toe that line. I, I don't recommend it in the sensitive world that we live in today just because it could damage your brand if you, if you believe in something so strongly and then put it out there politically. That is what it is, and I'm not telling you not to, but you know, tread, tread lightly. But it allows you to converse in so many different ways, and ultimately it allows you to establish authority. And if you, if you have great belief and knowledge in your industry, share it. Use Twitter to do it. Hop into conversations that people are having. Don't hop in and try to sell your brand. That's one of the worst things you can do. Think about it this way. If you were at a party and you were standing around with two or three friends and you were talking about the game from the other day. Oh my God, I can't believe he made this play and that was one of the best, best, you know, best passes I've ever seen or best catches, whatever. And somebody walks into the conversation and while you're doing that, starts selling their MLM opportunity, starts talking to you about how you can recruit three friends and so on and so forth. Like you're all looking at that guy like, what dude, what the hell are you doing? That's not what we were talking about. Like if you want to join this conversation, talk about what we're talking about. So look for conversations. You can search hashtags. You can just scroll through your feed and more than likely you're going to pick up a conversation or two that you can contribute to, that you can add value to. And when you do that, people will start looking at you as a resource. Like, damn, this dude knows what he's talking about. Or this girl really has her shit together and has a lot of cool things to say. I want to follow her. Now, all of a sudden, they're over to your brand or they're over to your personal page. And they're engaging with you on a different level. And that snowball continues to roll downhill until it gets to a point where, where they want to patronize your business. They want to come see you. And you, you can do this from a personal page or you can do this from a brand page. I know I do a lot of this with the Breaking Brews account, which is Breaking Brews Co., if you'd like to follow. I also do this with my personal account, at Jason. Twitter is still one of the great greatest places to have a conversation. Now, I'm not saying you can't promote your brand and, and promote what you're doing because it works for that too, but there's more value in the conversation on Twitter. So if you're a brand that hasn't put a lot of stock into Twitter or even a lot of time, Start using it in that capacity and see if things change. Just hop on there and start conversing with people. Because I will say, in doing this project of following breweries on Twitter and Instagram, there are a lot that are a lot of you that I found have been ignoring Twitter, and you can really get a lot from it if you use it properly or use it again. We're going back to that that keyword here: consistency. If you use Twitter consistently, you can get a lot from it as well. Wow, did you know Americans consume an average of 350 slices of pizza every second? That is just freaking nuts. But it shows the United States loves its pie. And with 3 billion pizzas sold nationwide every year, it's a business that isn't going anywhere. If you're an entrepreneur who aspires to build a pizza empire, pick up a copy of The Pizza Equation a new book by Nick Bogaz, owner of Caliente Pizza and Draft House in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Follow Nick's rise up to taking a major leap that has resulted in the opening of five successful years. Nick's expertise has gained him accolades from pizza aficionados and industry leaders throughout the world. The Pizza Equation is available on Amazon.com as we speak. Simply jump over to Amazon and search The Pizza Equation and pick up your copy today. All right, let's talk about Instagram for a second. And the way that Instagram has grown over the past couple of years, pretty much since Facebook took it over, so many possibilities with, with this network. You can build your, your profile and your grid with great, sharp-looking images, uh, cans and bottles and labels and, and, and processes and ingredients and food and pictures of your establishment and take your product to different 
areas of the city and take pictures with the city as your background. There are so many possibilities with Instagram. Videos as well. We're, we're a very visual world. Imagery and video are ruling the realm right now. Instagram is a tremendous platform, as is Facebook, as is Twitter. You can put all of these things on all of these networks, but with Instagram, the power is huge because in addition to building your profile, you also have Instagram stories, which is something that people are spending even more time on, scrolling through people's stories and seeing what they're up to. It's very in the moment. You can do a live video. You can do clips of, of videos that you've pre-recorded and put them into your story and, and, and build something that's huge. And one of my favorite aspects of stories is the fact that Instagram added highlights. And you'll see this on many feeds below the profile and above the grid, packed right in the middle there. What that is, is an opportunity to showcase everything that you do within your business in almost like a, a digital brochure. That's one of my favorite aspects of Instagram is the fact that you could take your entire beer menu, take images, put descriptions, and make a highlight of it. You can do the same with your food menu. You can do it with your venue overall and, and, and invite people to come see what you're all about and show them how comfortable they're going to be when they visit your brewery or they visit your bar or restaurant. There is so much power in Instagram right now. You absolutely have to be using it. Now, there's one rule that applies to all of these networks, and in having pre-recorded a few of these episodes of the Breaking Brews podcast already, I know this has been talked about, and I have no problem. Hell, if we talked about this in every episode, maybe it would help, and I have no problem doing it. When you're taking pictures of your beer, use clean glassware. I cannot stress that enough. I cannot tell you how many beer pictures I have encountered that just bubbles. And when you really focus in it, you can see how just awful and dirty they look. And it's a terrible representation of your brand. As an enthusiast, you want to use clean glassware as well. Because A, you want to show that you're not drinking out of a dirty friggin' glass. And B, as someone that's taking pictures and posting them for other breweries, if you're at home with that beer, you're backhandedly representing that brand. You're, you're showcasing that you're drinking good beer from a brand that you support. Show their beer in clean glassware, please. It's just common courtesy. And as a bar or a restaurant or a tasting room, if you're not serving beer out of clean glassware, for one, shame on you. Two, you've got to be thinking that every beer that you pour is going to end up on the internet. Someone is going to take a picture of that beer and post it on Instagram, on Untapped, on Facebook, and in, in community groups, and they're on their own profile. They're going to put it on Twitter. Your beer is going to go public. If you're not serving it in a clean glass, people are going to look at that like, what the fuck are they doing? They're not cleaning their glasses. That looks terrible. It just makes the picture look better. And one of the biggest peeves I can think of is when you really set the stage for this picture with maybe you surround it with hops or you, you, you put other ingredients from beer or you've got food next to it. You name it. If you're really staging it for a nice picture, if it's in a dirty glass, guys, don't do it. Sorry. I, I know I'm on a soapbox for that. However, it's very important that it just, it just, it, it represents the brand so much better when you're showing pictures in clean glassware. Thank you this PSA for clean glassware is now over, at least for this episode of the Breaking Brews podcast. Like I said, expect more of this in the future for, from upcoming episodes. That said, we're going to get ready to wrap up here, but there's a few things that I want to talk to you about before we sign off for this session of the Breaking Brews podcast and wrap up release week. There are some trends in social media that they're not going to change. Now, we talked earlier about how Sometimes algorithms are going to shift or they're going to implement new strategies or even new looks to platforms and, 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 and news feeds. But there are some trends that you can utilize to your advantage that aren't going to change. I've got six of them, and I wrote about this on BreakingBrews.com in the past, and I will put the, the link to the full article on the show notes for this episode or for this session. But let's go over those real quick. First off, Conversing with your audience, that's never going to change. Regardless of how algorithms shift, 
and new nuances enter into the social web, utilizing these platforms for conversation, it's always going to be there. So use that power to your advantage. Talk to people. Get to know their likes and their dislikes. Don't get pissed off when someone leaves you a negative review. A negative review can be very, very powerful in the fact that it's going to show you where you may have screwed up a bit. And it's going to give you an opportunity to fix those issues. Now, not all reviews are 100% accurate. Some people tend to embellish and they get behind the keyboard and really take the story to a level that blows it out of proportion. But at the same time, if they're taking the time to do that, take the time to respond. Take the time to show that you care and that you want to help them get past that and ultimately bring them back for a second, third, fourth visit. A lot of times people will use a negative review just as a, as a platform to be heard. And the social web gives everybody that platform. So be the type of person that responds in a positive way and tries to get the most from those negative interactions so you can turn it into a positive one going forward. So no matter what changes with the social web, the power of conversation is always going to be in place. So use that to your advantage. Number two, getting results by consistently posting to your networks is never going to change. Now, we've already talked about this in detail. So developing a strategy of how often you want to post, that's entirely up to you. But I would recommend that you lean more towards daily or bi-daily versus weekly, bi-weekly, and monthly. Because again, you're up against a lot of other companies that are doing these strategies daily. You want to be in that conversation. You want to be getting content that's out there and has the opportunity to be seen. And when you do it infrequently, it's just not going to happen. So consistency is king. I've been talking about it a lot on this on this session. Make sure that you use it as much as you possibly can. These networks are there for you at your disposal on a daily basis, and there are ways to plot out how to do this to where you're not spending all day every day in front of your computer. Use tools like Buffer and Hootsuite and TweetDeck and the scheduler within Facebook to plot out some content that's going to get in front of people. That's going to make your brand more authority for you in the long run. Number three, being a thought leader in your industry is never going to change. There isn't an algorithm in the world that's going to take away your knowledge and your passion for your brand and for your industry. So use these networks to showcase that, whether it's through imagery, whether it's through word, whether it's through a combination of both. Make sure that you're harnessing the power and the, the overall knowledge and skill set that you have in that digital space, and it's going to make people gravitate to your brand much more frequently. And the conversations that are going to spawn from that are going to be very worthwhile to you on a personal level and on a professional level. Number four, people asking for recommendations on social media is never going to change. Like I said earlier in the show, People are utilizing Facebook to ask for recommendations. I see a tweet almost every day on Twitter for podcast recommendations. You could Google these things, but people want to hear it from actual people. So jump in those conversations and answer those questions. But above all, make sure your brand is relevant because your fans are going to suggest you if they believe in you enough and they want other people to experience what you're all about. So utilize those networks and be a part of them because this is just going to, as the, as the web continues to get more social, this is going to be the behavior that more and more people flock to every day. So be a part of that. Make sure you're relevant in these, in these spaces, get content out there that showcases what you can offer to someone when they stumble upon your business and converse with your loyal fans because you're turning them into brand advocates as you do that. So the more people love what you do and, and love how you're a part of their lives, they're going to want more people to experience that as well. Number five, people being dicks on social media will never change either. I I'd said before, there's a lot that you can get from a negative review, and I, I fully believe that, but there are still going to be people that utilize social media just to be an asshole. There's no getting around that, so don't let it get you upset. Roll with the punches. You can choose, and there are many brands that do this very well, to be snarky in return. Wendy's is always the one that I, that, that I use as an example when I'm talking about this specific area of, of voice or digital voice. Wendy's does it perfectly. They promote their brand. 
but in a lot of conversations, they are very, very snarky and, and asshole-ish. It's hilarious because you think of the, the, the size of that brand. It's great to see that they're humans. It shows that they're, there's a human element to their business. They're not trying to be this straight corporate jargon branding. Oh, you need to eat our burgers every day. They have a personality. You can choose to do that. It's totally up to you how you utilize your voice. But don't get hung up on the fact that people are going to be assholes and they're, they're going to be jerks. Again, if they're doing it in a fashion where they're trying to communicate with you about a truly horrible experience, then that's fine. You want to be, you want to, you want to thank them for that because again, they took the time to tell you, I didn't feel like this was on. And I, I feel like you could be doing better here. This is all feedback that can help your brand grow. But if you make a beer and someone gets on and just shreds it because they don't like IPAs, well, fuck them. They, that's, that's their prerogative. That's never going to change. People are going to do that, but don't let it hurt you. Don't let it get you upset. Laugh it off and move on to the people that truly do because when you, that truly do love you, because when you look at it, when you look at it on a grand scale, that negative voice is the minority. So don't let it keep you up at night. And finally, as simple as it can get, people using social media is never going to change either. We may bitch and moan and complain about algorithm shifts, about, oh my God, what this person said and how Facebook is nothing but cat memes and I don't want to look at that. I don't care how often people say they're going to get off social media. They're not going to get off social media. In some way, shape, or form, we are all going to be part of this world for the rest of our lives. This is the world we live in today, and the world is driven by the internet. Communication is driven by the internet. Knowledge and education is driven by the internet. So there is no point in trying to think you're going to change the course of history and the course of our world as we live it today by saying I'm canceling my Facebook account. Now, in that same respect, as a, as a person, as, a, as an individual, if you feel these networks aren't worth your time, then they're not worth your time. That's fine. Don't, don't be on them. But do not criticize the brands and the people that are because the vast majority is utilizing platforms like Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Google, YouTube, you name it. The list goes on and on. They're utilizing these networks to their advantage to build their brands, to communicate, to ultimately... Be a success within their industry. If you don't want to be a part of all of my heart, if you are a brand or a business of any kind and you're not utilizing the power that's at your, at your fingertips and at your disposal every second of every day, you're doing it wrong. You want to be here. You want to be on these networks. You want to communicate. You want to be a part of that world. Fuck all the negativity. It's going to exist. But you can go to any corner of the world on any platform, on any level, and there's going to be something negative, period. There's no getting around it. So don't disqualify something that can truly help your brand evolve just because there are elements of it that you don't like. So that's going to wrap this up. That, like I said, not trying to get super technical, but what I've, t what I've covered with you today are some very simple aspects that you could jump off this podcast now, hop over to your favorite platform, hop over to all of your platforms and start implementing. And I'm looking forward to seeing how you use this. And please, I would love to hear from you. If anything that we talked about today is useful once you start implementing it and, and it helped your brand, shoot me a message at Jason Sircone or at Breaking Brews Co. on Twitter or Instagram or shoot me an email, jason at breakingbrews.com. I'd love to hear how it works for you. Also, if you have any questions about what we covered today or any other aspects of social media, I'm an email away, jason at breakingbrews.com. I'd love to talk with you guys. So that's it. That is the end of release week. Five sessions of the Breaking Brews podcast in five days. I hope you had as much fun on this ride as I did. Now, before we wrap up completely, let's do a couple house cleaning notes. As you know, I'm doing a beer money giveaway for release week. Now that you've had an opportunity, or at least I hope you've had the opportunity, to consume all five of these episodes, head over to iTunes and rate and review this show. 
not just this episode, but overall, you've got five sessions of the Breaking Brews podcast to kick things off. It should give us a nice foundation and give you a good idea of what this show is going to be all about as we go forward with weekly episodes. But give an honest review. Rate the show, review the show, let me know what you think, and I'm always happy to hear what people have to say about how I'm producing the podcast. In addition, share any of these episodes or just the show in general with a link to, you could do a link to breakingbrews.com slash podcast. Let the world know you listened to the show, let them know you thought it was valuable, and let them know that they should listen as well. When you do those two things, rate and review the show, as well as share an episode on Twitter and or Instagram, your name will be entered to win a $100 Visa gift card, and that money is for beer, please. I can't force you to do anything, but it would be cool if you used to buy beer and then you took a picture of the beer you bought and once again tag Breaking Brews so we can so I can share with everybody how this beer money went to good use. These first five sessions from release week as we wrap up this uh, great week that we've been sharing with one another, but I'm going to give you another week to participate in the contest. And in that time, the next session of the Breaking Brews podcast with Dennis Hawk and Burt Mooney from Strange Roots Experimental Ales will drop and it'll give you another episode to help you gauge how well I'm doing with the Breaking Brews podcast and give you more fodder to put up on iTunes with rating and reviewing. So Dennis and Burt joined me to talk about rebranding. So Strange Roots was once known as Dry Log Brewing and Dennis and Burt joined me to talk about the rebrand as a whole how it affected their brand image, how it affected existing inventory, and what it's created for their future as a brewery here in the greater Pittsburgh region. So tune in for session six. That'll drop next Wednesday. And going forward, the Breaking Brews podcast, new episodes will come at you weekly every Wednesday. Looking forward to wrapping with you guys again to win some beer money, rate and review the show. And share an episode or all the episodes through Twitter and or Instagram with the hashtag BBPod, and you will be entered to win beer money. My name is Jason Sircone. This has been Session 5 of the Breaking Brews Podcast. I'm looking forward to being with you guys in your ears, in your glasses once again next week. We'll see you then. This session of the Breaking Brews podcast is in the history books. Did you like what you heard? Help the show find the ears of more thirsty beer enthusiasts just like you. Subscribe to the show on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and anywhere you listen to podcasts. Drop a rating and review and share every episode on Twitter and Instagram using the hashtag BBPod. That's B-B-P-O-D. Follow Breaking Brews on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube for daily content about your favorite adult beverage, and check out breakingbrews.com slash podcast for updates on the show. We'll catch you on the next session of the Breaking Brews podcast. <laughs>